Hey everyone, welcome back to the real Android TV experience. Before we get into it, I just want to be clear, this project isn't mine. I didn't create it, no one paid me to talk about it and I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just lucky enough to test it out and honestly, it's one of the best Android TV experience I had running on a PC. I'll try to answer as many questions as I can in the comments below, based on what I learned and tested. But if you got technical stuff, uh, head over to the Telegram group, they're super helpful and I promise they don't bite. Also just so you know, I'm planning to do a future video showing how to install this on a USB stick, so you can take your Android TV with you wherever you go. And by the end of this video, when you show your mom what you built, she's going to be shocked. Kind of like uh, you were when uh, at age 12 you found out your brother was adopted. But deep down you always felt something was off. Like why does he have blue eyes when everyone else in the family has brown eyes? Except your dad, who has uh, green eyes. And at some point your little brain tried to make sense of it. Like, hmm, green and brown makes blue? Uh, anyway, this is the guy, here is his YouTube channel, I'll leave the link down in the description, along with the Telegram groups where you can get all the files you need for this build. Like I mentioned earlier, they're super friendly, I'm not 100% sure they speak English, but they definitely know how to use Google Translate or ChatGPT. So don't be shy, drop your questions in there if you're stuck and they'll do their best to help. Now if you enjoy this kind of content, weird builds, tech experiments and me talking about genetics and Android TV in the same video, then go ahead and like, subscribe and finger blast your keyboard down in the comment sections. Let me know how your build went, what worked, what broke and if your mom is impressed yet. Now, for this build I'm using an older but still amazing Lenovo M910 Q Tiny PC paired with an Intel Core i5-7500T and 16 gigs of RAM, more than enough for what we're doing. I've got a mini wireless keyboard to help with the navigation because, let's be honest, this is a PC not a tablet. Also using a 3D printed stand because I can and because why not make it look cooler while we are at it. We're installing this Android experience on a 120 gigs SATA SSD, not because we have to, just because I want to. And one thing to remember, this isn't an emulation. There is no Windows installed on the SSD. Think of it like this. The PC has a brain, sure, but we are giving it new knowledge. Right now it's a clean state, no memories, no past, just waiting to be filled with Android goodness. Alright. Let's start this build. I'll try to make it as understandable as I can, so follow along, don't blink. First head over to their Telegram group, click on it, scroll over to the file sections and this time we're downloading Nexus Player 9 x64. You also need the data 64 uh, gigs file, so grab that one too. Now go to the ISO Nexus Player x64, right click on it and open it with WinRAR or 7-zip. Extract all the files from this bad boy into a new folder. Call it something logical like Nexus Player Extracted. Yes, you created this folder yourself. Easy job. Once that's done, head over to do your shiny new Nexus folder and open it. You'll see a bunch of files. Don't panic, we are not touching most of them yet. Now, we need to prepare our SSD. Plug in your SSD using a USB to SATA adapter, then go to your start menu and type create and format hard disk partitions. I already done it, but let's pretend I haven't. Find your 120 gigs SSD, right click on it and choose delete volume. Yes, agree to everything you have to is the law. Next, we'll create two partitions. First one, right click, new simple volume, click next, set the size to 500 megabytes, file system FAT32, label it boot, next, finish, and well done. 
Second one, right click on the remaining unallocated space. New simple volume, next, leave the full size as it is, file system NTFS, label it as Nexus, next, finish, well done again. Now we got two partitions. One is 500 megabytes, FAT32 boot, the other one is the rest of your SSD, NTFS, labeled Nexus. That's our base. Now we can load the system into like real hackers, well, fun hackers with keyboards and Google tabs opened. All right, now let's make sure everything is in place. Open up File Explorer and you should see your two partitions, one labeled boot and the other one labeled Nexus. Yeah, those are the ones we just created a few moments ago. Let's double check their properties just to be sure everything's correct. Right click on the boot drive, select properties. You'll see it's formatted as FAT32 and is close to 500 megabytes. Now do the same thing for the Nexus partition. Right click, properties. This one should be NTFS and somewhere around 112 gigs, give or take. Perfect, now let's load the goods. Head over to your Nexus player extracted folder, the one we created earlier. Open it and you'll see a bunch of files. What we want to do now is copy everything except for one file. Do not copy system SFS just yet. So select everything except that file, right click and hit copy. Now click on the little plus sign in the file explorer to open a new window. It will just make things easier to manage. In that new window, go into your boot partition, that one we labeled earlier, and paste all those files you copied in the last step. Once that's done, head back to your Nexus Player Extracted folder. This time we're going to grab the system SFS file, yeah, the one we skipped earlier. And while we are at it, we'll also grab all the kernel files. you recognize them by their name, usually starting with kernel or similar. Select all of those, right click on it and hit copy. We are almost there, just a few more steps and Android will be leaving on this SSD. Alright, click on the plus sign in the file explorer again to open a new window. Now head over to your Nexus partition, the one we formatted as NTFS. Right click anywhere inside that drive and hit paste. That will drop the system SFS file and all the kernel files we copied earlier. Give it a moment, depending on your SSD and USB speed, it might take a few seconds. Once that's done, we all got the files in the place and we're ready for boot. One last tweak and we're basically Android TV engineers. Now at this point, you should be able to see both of your partitions, boot and Nexus in File Explorer. We are not done just yet, we still need to add the data. Head over to the zip file you downloaded earlier, labeled something like data 64 gigs zip. Right click on it and open it with WinRAR or 7-zip, whichever you got. Then extract the entire contents directly into the Nexus partition. Yes, everything inside that zip goes straight to the root of the Nexus drive, not inside the folder. Now I'm going to be honest, this part took me around 7 minutes to extract, so I'll skip through it here. But you, go grab a snack, feed the kittens or just stare at the progress bar like I did. Once it's done, we ready to boot. Okay, I lied to you, we're not ready to boot just yet. Head over to the file explorer and open your Nexus partition. You'll notice the partition is now taken up around 61 gigs, which is good. That means the data.image file we extracted earlier is right there. Now let's make things a bit more personal. Open your boot partition, go into the boot folder and then open the group folder. In there you'll see a folder called Teams. Inside it you'll find some PNG image files. Those are the graphics you see during boot. And yeah, we're going to replace them. I already made some custom PNG files with my own designs and I named them exactly the same as the original ones. So all I have to do is copy and paste them right into the Teams folder. You can do the same, just keep the files names and dimensions identical. And to finish it off, we're going to grab the Android X86 PNG file I made, right click on it to check its dimension if you're curious and then paste it all the way back to the ISO Linux folder 
inside the boot directory. Trust me, you'll see exactly why we're doing all this in just a minute. Now it's time to make this Android TV experience feels like you built it. As a quick reminder, if you haven't done it already, go ahead and like, share and subscribe if you're enjoying this weird but beautiful Android TV journey. And of course, don't forget to finger blast your keyboard down in the comments. Let me know if it worked, if it broke or if your boot screen now has your cat face on it. And here we go, it's time to assemble this beautiful monster. Grab your freshly prepared SSD and plug it into the PC. Take a moment, look around, admire your creation. That sleek Lenovo tiny PC with your custom Android setup inside, sitting there like it's ready to launch a rocket, or at least play some jellyfin. Place it gently on your 3D printed stand, because presentation matters. Then casually forget to put the screw back in, just like I did. But it's fine, we don't need screws, this isn't the NASA launch, it's just Android TV DIY style. And it looks great, um, good doing it. Alright, let's fire this thing up. Alright, moment of truth. Simply press your PC power button and we'll be greeted with the boot menu. And now you can see exactly why I dropped in those custom PNG files earlier. I didn't go too crazy with it because at the end of the day this isn't fully our build, but hey, a little personality never hurts. At this point you'll see a few kernel options on the screen. Remember this isn't an emulator, this is the real deal. Android is installed directly on your SSD. So now it's time to find the kernel that works best for your machine. In my case, option 3 works great, so that's the one I'll go with. Let it boot up and look at that. It works. Smooth, clean, fast. This is the Android TV experience we were chasing. Don't forget to grab your mini wireless keyboard, preferably one with cool RGB lights, just to make it feel extra legit. When prompted, go ahead and name your device. I'm just keeping it simple, Android TV. And there you go, you're inside, it's working, and you're building it yourself. And of course, let's take this just a little further. Head into the settings menu, scroll down to device preferences, and tap on about. Here we can see it's running Android version 9, and because we can, we are going to click on it multiple times to enable developer options. No reason, it just feels right. Now let's head back and go into the storage, just to make sure everything looks solid. It's showing close to 64 gigs, so we're pretty much where we want to be. Not exact, but it works and that's what matters. Next up, it's time to add the Play Store. Go to your Apps menu, open up the Play Store and sign in. You can use your own Gmail account or just a throwaway one uh, if you're testing or don't fully trust the build yet. Either way, once you're in, you got full access to the apps, streaming, and everything Android TV has to offer, all on the system you build yourself. Okay, now that we're inside the Play Store, let's install a little app called DRM Info. Just type it in the search bar, install it, and open it up. Once it loads, scroll all the way to the bottom and tap the section to expand it. Here's where we can check our Wii Divine security level, and yep, as expected, we're at L3. What does that mean? Uh, it means streaming services like Netflix, Disney+, Plus, and Prime Video are going to be limited to SD quality. Is that ideal? No. But does it matter to me? Uh, not even a little, because I'm using Jellyfin. And guess what? This does not affect Jellyfin at all, so yes, you can still sit back, relax, and stream your glorious 4K movies without worrying about DRM or restrictions. Basically, you build a box that plays what you want, how you want, not what corporations tell you, basically. To keep things going, uh, grab your cool RGB wireless keyboard because it's time to download some actual apps we'll use. First up, obviously, Jellyfin. Open the Play Store, search for it, hit install, and we already leveling it up. Next, you guess it, it's YouTube, because 
whether you're watching anime intros, DIY videos, or people building stuff they will never use, it's a must have. Once both are installed, we're going to add them to our favorites for quick access. Just go to the plus sign and simply add them. Time to fire up YouTube and see if everything really working. But just open it up, play a random video, literally anything. Maybe it's a cat screaming into the void, maybe it's someone building a pizza oven out of clay, doesn't matter. What matter is, it works. Playback is smooth, audio is synced and we are getting exactly what we came here for. At this point, if you haven't done it yet, like the video, subscribe for more and hey, do it just because you can. You made it this far, you might as well get rewarded with more weird and cool DIY stuff. And now let's test Jellyfin, open the app, drop in your server URL, you already know the drill. Log in, scroll a bit and play a random movie, just because you can, and look at that, smooth playback, no lag, everything running perfectly. Now let's grab a few more apps, head to the Play Store, search for Disney Plus and install it. I don't use it, so I don't have a login, but you do you, try it out. Next, go for Prime, it loads fine, no complaints, and for Netflix, just grab it from app to TV app. Everything seems to be installed and run just as fine. So yeah, you basically got a fully featured smart TV. Built on a PC, you probably rescued it from a dusty shelf. Now, if you made it this far, I can confidently say you're not normal, and that's a good thing. It means we can totally be friends. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this weird video. Until next time, thanks for watching and enjoy your new Android TV setup.